Iron Maiden formed in 1975 on Christmas Day by bassist Steve Harris. The name Iron Maiden was adapted from the movie The Man in the Iron Mask. Iron Maiden's first album was released in 1980, five years after the band had formed. The first five years of Maiden consist of much touring and many changes in band members, including vocalists Paul Day and Dennis Wilcock, Dave Sullivan and Terry Rance on guitars, and Barry Perkins and Doug Sampson on drums. Steve Harris and Dave Murray remained throughout the five years. After yet another change in lineup, in 1979, the band settled a major record deal with EMI. The self-titled album, Iron Maiden, was released in 1980, with Paul Diano on vocals, Steve Harris on bass, Dave Murray and Dennis Stratton on guitars, and Clive Burr on drums. This album reached number four in the UK charts in the first week, and it featured such early favourites as Running Free, Phantom of the Opera and Iron Maiden. After the huge success of the first album, including supporting Judas Priest and Kiss, guitarist Dennis Stratton was fired from the band due to personal issues. He was then replaced by Adrian Smith. In 1981, Iron Maiden released Killers, their second studio album. Many songs of this album had been written prior to the debut album. After the release of this album, the Killers World Tour began in February 1981 in England. This took Iron Maiden to over 17 different countries to play 140 different shows over 11 months. I left alone. My mind was blank. By 1981, singer Paul Ziano was demonstrating more self-destructive behaviour through cocaine and drug usage. His performances began to suffer, and as Iron Maiden achieved large-scale success worldwide, by the end of 1981, Paul was fired. Bruce Dickinson, previously of Samson, auditioned for Iron Maiden in September 1981. He joined shortly afterwards. Before the release of Number of the Beast in 1982, which was to be Bruce's first album with Iron Maiden, the band did a small headlining tour of the UK, where they played some new songs featured on the new album at some venues. The Number of the Beast was released in March 1982. This album was Iron Maiden's first album to reach number one on the UK charts and became a top ten hit in many countries. The Beast on the Road World Tour supported this album, which was the band's biggest tour to date. During the US leg of the tour, the band met a lot of controversy due to many Christian groups wrongfully accusing them of being satanic and destroying their records. After the end of the tour, drummer Clive Burr quit the band due to personal and tour schedule problems. He was then replaced by Nico McBrain, previously of the band Trust. Shortly after, the band released their fourth studio album, Peace of Mind, in 1983. This album reached number three on the UK charts, and it was the first to feature drummer Nico McBrain. It featured such classics as The Trooper, Flight of Icarus, and Revelations. The World Peace Tour was in support of this album. This took the band to 18 countries, including their second visit to Australia, the first being on the Beast on the Road Tour of 1982. Following the success of Peace of Mind, the band released the album Power Slave in September 1984. This album is notable as being the first album to feature the same lineup as the previous album. This album featured a musical retelling of Samuel Taylor Coleridge's Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner, which uses pieces of the original poem as lyrics. It is also the band's longest song, at a length of 13 minutes and 38 seconds. The album also features classics such as Two Minutes to Midnight and Aces High. The World Slavery Tour was in support of this album. This tour was the largest tour to date, consisting of 193 shows over 13 months. It was one of the biggest tours in musical history. 
Iron Maiden's first full-length live album, Live After Death, was recorded over four nights at Long Beach Arena in California during the World Slavery Tour. This album featured songs from their first four albums and was released in October 1985. After the gruelling months of touring, the band took a six-month break, which was the first break in the band's history. Upon returning from their break, the band adapted a different approach for their 1986 studio album, Somewhere in Time. Although it was not a concept album, it was loosely based around the idea of time travel and history. This was the first album that featured synthesized bass and guitar effects. Although this was different from Maiden's regular sound, it charted well across the world. The Somewhere On Tour World Tour was in support for this album. The experimentational sounds of Somewhere in Time led to a similar sound on Iron Maiden's next album, Seventh Son of a Seventh Son, released in 1988. It was also the band's first concept album, featuring a story about a mythical child who possessed clairvoyant powers. For the first time the band used keyboards on recording instead of guitar synthesizers as on Somewhere in Time. The album was a huge success and was the band's second album to hit number one on the UK charts. Seventh Son of a Seventh Tour supported this album. In 1989, Adrian Smith released an album with ASAP. In 1990, Bruce Dickinson released his first solo album. This caused the band to spend 1989 off. Soon after work on Iron Maiden's next album began, Adrian Smith left the band due to lack of enthusiasm. Bruce Dickinson's solo project guitarist, Yannick Goes, was chosen to replace Smith, the first new member in seven years. In 1990, Iron Maiden released No Prayer for the Dying. This album had a raw sound when compared to the band's other releases. The song Bring Your Daughter to the Slaughter was Iron Maiden's first number one single. It holds the record for being the fastest single to hit number one. Although he had left prior to the recording of the album, Adrian Smith co-wrote Hooks in You, which is featured on this album. In 1991, Bruce Dickinson performed a solo tour before returning to the studio to record Fear of the Dark in 1992. This album was much longer than any other previous release as it was the first album to be recorded on CD rather than LP. It topped the UK album charts. This album features many fan favourites such as the title track and Afraid to Shoot Strangers. Fear of the Dark is a welcomed addition to many of the band's set list of recent tours with the audience seeing the melody of the intro. In 1993, Bruce Dickinson left the band to pursue his solo career, although he had agreed to stay with the band for a farewell tour and two live albums, a real live one and a real dead one. They were released after Bruce left the band. In 